So last week I was sitting in my office, I had my back to the window, I was talking to a coworker of mine named Brandon, when he said, whoa, something is on fire, and he pointed outside the window. I turned around and I saw this, this thick cloud of gray and black smoke about 100 yards away. I couldn't see exactly what was burning, like you know where it was coming from, because there were some buildings in the way, but I knew that area, and I took a guess. Later that day, a viewer tagged me in this Instagram video of that fire, and I was right. It was a homeless camp in Goose Hollow. There's a coffee shop near there that I walk to, and I see the tents. These types of fires, these homeless camp fires, are a problem in Portland. And, and there's a long list of reasons why. But there's a term being mentioned now in that list that's typically reserved for more rural parts of Oregon, not, not its cities, wildfires. We don't worry about wildfires in downtown, though this year Portland's firefighters say we should. And they explained why to Maggie Vespa after she, just walking downtown, came upon one of these fires herself. This is video I shot on my cell phone Tuesday. A homeless camp caught fire along I-405 at Northwest 14th and Cooch. As firefighters worked to put it out, an ODOT staffer started yelling. There's a camp in there. I need you to move back. I moved back across the street. Zooming in, you can see another reason why firefighters were so afraid. This patch of land has bushes and trees, all dry fuel primed to go up in flames as cars cruise by. We went back Friday. That tent was gone, and a man camping nearby didn't want to talk to us. Firefighters don't know how this started. They don't think anyone was hurt. Then I started seeing black smoke coming up from this spot right here. Wesley Mahan lives nearby and watched flames spread. He knows it could have been worse. I immediately saw that all the vines on the lattice work for the bridge here had burnt at least for, uh, it looks like, about 15 feet. Mahan was struck by this. Firefighters are not. We have a, um, a real concern this year. In the last year, Portland's housing crisis appears to have grown at historic rates. This week, we learned calls about camps catching fire have spiked too. In January of 2020, Portland Fire got 67 of these calls. By July, it was up to 114. Since then, they've taken well over 100 calls per month. So far this month, they've had 157. That's a 134% spike since the start of 2020. It's a main concern of the fire chief. A main concern because people are getting hurt, says Lieutenant Rich Chapman, but also because heading into summer, our area's moisture content is alarmingly low, AKA the same reality that fuels wildfire fears in rural wooded areas now has urban firefighters worried too. What makes Portland so beautiful Forest Park, um, all these different areas where we have lots of trees and um, lots of great vegetation, beautiful stuff, and especially when it, where it butts up right here to the city in these urban areas, um, it not only becomes a fire risk, it becomes a health and safety risk. A risk to highway infrastructure when fires start on ODOT land and a risk to businesses and homes in other cases. This week, a viewer sent us these photos of a homeless camp that caught fire along North Portland's Peninsula Crossing Trail. You can see all the trees and grass. You can also see houses in the background. They're not far away. We don't know if anyone was hurt. Chapman says the main causes of these fires are people trying to stay warm, provide light, and cook food. It leaves many, like Mahan, torn. He's made a point to meet a lot of people living on the streets. You try and help where you can, you know, but you still, you still want to preserve where you live and not have it go, go up in flames. Okay, so it sounds like those fears are warranted. And I wanted to bring in Maggie Vespa now to just talk about a couple of a couple of additional points here. For one, what are they doing to mitigate this and to, and to keep people safe? Yeah, so Dan, a lot is being done. I mean, firefighters are out there educating people experiencing homelessness on fire safety as our service providers. And then staff with the city tell us when a camp does catch fire, they absolutely take that into account when deciding whether to clear that camp and then give people in it priority when getting shelter, 
and services. And then there's also another factor in all of this, and that's the agencies who are in charge of and own these properties. In case in point, I talked to Don Hamilton. He's a spokesman for ODOT. We talked earlier about the fire that I came upon, and he said, hey, their landscaping crews definitely take fire risk into account more and more, like you'll see on that property, for instance. That land has bushes that are spaced out. It also has barely any grass. And he says that's not an accident. That really helps mitigate fire risk. But it is a good reminder. I mean, we talk about defensible space when it comes to people um, keeping wildfires away from their homes. And that's a really good practice for everybody, whether you live in an urban area or in the suburbs or in a rural area. So just everyone, firefighters say, should keep that in mind moving forward. That's a good point. You know, another thing I wanted to touch on, and I know you got into in your piece kind of the cause. You talked to the, to the Lieutenant Chapman who said that, you know, it's very common things like staying warm, people cooking food. But, you know, you and I were talking about this a little earlier. We get emails all the time from viewers who have their their own opinions about how they think these fires are starting. Yeah, definitely. To kind of hit the nail on the head there, every time we do one of these stories or we post about it on social media, people pretty much write in immediately saying, I'm going to paraphrase here, but they say things like, come on, obviously they were cooking drugs and that's how the fire started. Or come on, obviously someone lit that camp on fire and this is a case of arson. Have you looked into that? And the answer is yes, we have. And I just want to point out, Lieutenant Chapman and I had those conversations and he said, Absolutely. Both those things do happen, but he said they're not common. And the overriding cause, he stresses, is people who are providing for their basic needs. And either way, he pointed out, regardless of how the fire starts, firefighters do have to arrive, they have to respond, and they have to put the fire out. And the point here is this is happening way more now than it ever has before. Right. Maggie, thank you.